Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, um, we're gonna do another history lesson. So I'm gonna talk to you about a couple of things uh, that were obviously that have to do with makeup because that's what my main channel is, is a makeup channel. Uh, so then we'll, we'll go from there and we'll kind of branch off and talk about other aspects of Roman um, civilizations and their the way they did things, like some weird stuff and some stuff that we may use today. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just gonna do a eyeshadow look and, while I talk about ancient Rome. So if you're interested in that, please feel free to watch it. And if you like my video, please feel free to subscribe. So the only thing I did before I started my video was put tape on my under my eyes right here and right here. I feel it's just easier to create more of a wing look um, instead of just doing the concealer afterwards. I just think it works better. So, so let's start. Okay, so in ancient Rome, obviously they had makeup. They did blush. They did eyeshadows. Um, the eyeshadows that they, the only really notable colors that they used was either black or green. So, I mean, that's not too exciting. Um, Rome, get it together. But, um, yeah. So, oh, and for if, you feel, if I'm talking weird, it's because I have, um, like, a sucky candy in my mouth. Uh, yeah, my mouth was dry. So, anyway. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, so they did that. They also used eyeliner. They applied it with a stick, a needle, uh, made of wood, glass, bone, or ivory. They had no rep record of lipsticks, which is weird, because the ancient Egyptians had lip stains. But I guess when it came to makeup, a huge difference between ancient Rome and, like, Greece and Egypt was Greece and Egypt used it to accentuate beauty, where Rome kind of used makeup to keep beauty, to they they felt to sustain beauty, um, so that was the idea behind their makeup. Um, so they had their ideal um, eyes from a Rome perspe Roman perspective, an ancient Roman perspective. The ideal eye for a woman was big, large eyes with um, l large eyelashes, like long eyelashes. And uh, I guess there was a famous uh, what Roman author. He was a naturalist, and his name is Pl Pliny, P L I N Y. The elder wrote that uh, wrote that eyelashes fell off from sexual excess, so it was especially important for women to keep their eyes eyelashes long to prove their chastity. So, girls, if you don't have eyelashes, it means you've been busy. So. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the author was a naturalist. He was a natural naturalist philosopher. He was also a naval and army commander of the early Roman Empire. So um, he accomplished a lot, but he also just made things up, it seems like, uh, especially when it comes to eyelashes. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, what's next? So they used coal, just like in ancient Egypt. Um, it was, but when they used it, it was makeup that was composed of ashes, soot, and antimony, which is a sulfide mineral stibnite known since ancient times when powdered was used in cosmetics and medicine. So, yeah, so not only did it make you look good but it made you feel good too sounds like it's all around a good thing um saffron was also infused with this makeup in order to improve on the smell and they usually used a round stick made of ivory wood bone with or bone which was dipped in oil or water first so they would dip it in oil or water first and then they would put it in the makeup and that's how they would apply it um, they also used charred rose petals and dated st or date stones to darken the eyes, which is, again, that black that they're talking about, which, let's be honest, kind of dull. Rome, come on. Colored eyeshadow was used by crushing precious stones such as greens, commonly came from malachite, and blue from azurite. 
So they did use like blue, so it was like blue, greens, and blacks. Um, Romans preferred dark brows that almost met in the center. Um, that's not cute. Maybe back then it was cute, but it ain't cute now. Um, they achieved this effect with the antimony or soot and extended them inward. So they came, they extended them into the center. So yeah, they had a unibrow. That was like the in thing, I guess. Let's go. Let's do it. Obviously, I'm not doing a unibrow today, so let's just get that clear. Because that doesn't look cute on anyone. Alright, so I'm going to apply some blue makeup. We're going to try for like a Roman look today. So it's like a bluish green. Okay. And so far, it's applying nice. Turn up the light a little bit. Okay. So, makeup, when it was sold, it was usually sold um, in tablet or cake form. So, it was in the shape of, like, a tablet or, or like, a cake. And the people would... Wealthy women bought makeup in elaborate containers made of gold, wood, glass, or bone. So, if you're wealthy, you got them in fancy containers. Um... Uh... Okay, so um, when glass blowing was invented in the first century CE in Syria, uh, it would lower the prices of the containers. Uh, teal was the most common color when it came to the glass containers that they would use for makeup. And uh, also, which I thought was pretty crazy, uh, the um, they would also, okay, so where they would sell these products, they would sell them in like, Markets and that what they refer to markets as were forums. So that's what the Romans the ancient Romans called mark a marketplace and usually that consisted of like a bathing areas bathing uh, like bathhouses uh, the first ideas of how spas like today's spas Were created was through Rome. I guess they were very very critical about um, cleanliness when it came to their bodies. They bathing was a huge component of like just daily life, and they would go there for because it was in the center of town, so it was near like the marketplace and stuff. So um, they would go and meet business partners, friends, and it was like a social event to go and take a bath. So everybody would kind of do that. So yeah, there's that. Um, but also at these, what, at these marketplaces, these forums, they would also sell gladiator sweat and fats of animals fighting in the arena were sold in souvenir pots outside the games to improve complexion. So in ancient Rome, they also thought like, ain't that the gladiators sweat, um, improved your skin's complexion or the animal fats of the animals that have fought in the these gladiator fights. Right now, just so everybody knows too, I'm using the Norvina palette by ABH, one of my favorite uh, companies, cosmetic companies, and I'm using the color E1. It doesn't, they don't have shade names, but they have numbers. So A1 is what I'm using, or E1, excuse me. It's like a tealish color, and I'm just working this into my eyelid. On a side note, did anybody see that Dr. Phil special that's coming out about um, transgender children? About how that even people that, like, I guess the person that's talking on Dr. Phil refers to themselves as queer and has a transgender husband that was once a female to male. And she's now even against uh, transition uh, in children. She said that a lot of before it became like this fad, the mo the highest population of 
transgender or people that had body dysmorphia were boys, were young boys that were effeminate, that had feminine characteristics. Um, but she said it was very rare to see a female come in and do this. But she said ever since, like, it's been like a cool thing to do. She said, like, that after when little girls get, um, like the sec, like they get the top surgery that so many times, uh, she, that this doctor would hear like months or weeks after the operation that the little girl would like beg for them to sew back on her body parts, which I think is extremely fucked up. Excuse my French, but I just don't, I, if you want to be trans, you want to live your life as a transgender person, by all means, like, I'm not here to stop you. I'm not telling you that what you, your ch life choice is wrong. I'm not telling you anything like that. All I'm saying is, is that don't do this to children. If they're not old, well, they can't be, they can't consent to any other aspect of their lives besides uh, something that they can't reverse. I'm sorry, but um, puberty blockers are a permanent life decision. They're not something like, oh, we can just temporarily turn off puberty. Here we go. And then we'll wait a little bit and then we'll just start it back up and everything's going to be normal. Oh, I just got makeup on my shirt. Get a little, I get a little excited when it comes to these type of topics. But... I have love for everybody at the end of the day, and I'm not trying to devalue someone else's life or what, the way they want to live their life, but I'm just, I'm not for people demanding that I see it the way that they see it. Because if I saw transgenderism the way that they saw it, then as a gay male, it would totally negate, if gender didn't exist, it would totally negate my lifestyle. It would totally negate the fact that I am a man a biological man that likes biological men. So ultimately, if there's no gender, then there's no such thing as that. So I'm not going to negate my values in order to respect somebody else who doesn't want to respect mine. I'm not saying there's people or respect me. I'm not saying that there's people out there that don't have a common level of respect for people. Like, for example, I got a great one. Blair White. Amazing. Amazing person. I feel she's she's centered. She's, you know, common sense. She understands that, um, she understands what her transition has, um, done for her and the realistic viewpoint on, um, the development of her identity. So, all I'm asking is just not, for don't force me into thinking something or don't call me transphobic because... I don't subscribe to something that negates my lifestyle. And I I just can't get on the the bus when it comes to the term queer. Like I can't. Like my whole life queer's been something that's been derogatory. It's not something that's been welcomed or nice. And uh why are we doing this now? Why are these little young little kids coming out and saying, "Oh, well this is, you know, I'm a queer per you don't understand what it's like. You don't you didn't understand what it was like to be called that as a kid when you were younger. But then I hear people saying, oh, we're going to take it back like the N-word. Um, no, 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 that's not, no, sorry. But anyway, I digress. Let me go back to my, what I was talking about to begin with, which is ain't your own. But I like to, you know, interject with a little bit of politics or a little bit of, you know, what I'm thinking about right now. So that's what I'm doing. So if you don't like it, find another channel to watch. But. I like to speak my mind, and if that's something you respect, even though you don't have to agree with me all the time, if it's something you respect, just some, you know, another perspective, then that's great, then you're in the right place. Okay, going back to what I was saying. Um, mirrors, mostly hand mirrors, uh, is what they had. They kept hand mirrors, and they pol it was either made of polished metal or mercury behind glass, which I think is amazing. That, to me, that I know obviously mercury is poisonous. Obviously, mercury wasn't a good idea, and um, we know that now. But back in the day, they used mercury behind glass to create a reflective surface. And in a way, that's genius, especially if you didn't know the ramifications of mercury poisoning and what mercury could potentially do if it got out of the glass. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's a great idea. It probably looked really cool too. Um, I gotta look, I gotta find a video or something of 
something like that. Because I would like to see what that looks like. Okay. Now, um, okay, so men use cosmetics, um, but it, societally it was frowned upon. Men that carried mirrors were viewed as effeminate, while those using face whitening creams were thought immoral because they were expected to be tan from working outside. So I've heard two different variations of that. I've heard that the rich, especially wealthy women, wore whitening creams on their face, skin whitening creams, because it showed, it was like kind of like flaunting your wealth because like you have servants to do everything for you. You you don't even have to go outside. So it's kind of like that idea, which um, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. But also, um, I've also heard this, too, is that it's considered um, immoral. But um, it seems to me like the first one was more of the reason that it was a social status thing. Because ever since the beginning of wealth, um, I feel like it's important for people that ha have it or had it to show. To, they kind of flaunt it. Um but yeah, I'm just blending all this out, blending it out, blending it out, blending it out. Okay. All right. So, oh, and also two, um, two more acceptable um characteristics or things that they, that men did were, uh. Light use of certain perfumes and moderate hair removal. Too little meant they too little hair removal meant they were weren't or were unrefined, and too much meant they were effeminate. If you got rid of too much hair, so um, yeah, there's that. Okay, I'm bring this down, bring this down, 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 and I can't forget the eyeliner either. So I'm trying to emulate, I mean, to a certain extent, trying to emulate ancient Roman makeup because they said it was um, blues, greens, or blacks that they used uh, for makeup. So that's what I'm doing right now. But they also said, I wish I could forget this, but they also said um, that they made their eyebrows almost touch. And there's certain things I'm willing to do to emulate um, a makeup look, I mean, I could try it. I'll think about it throughout this makeup look, whether I'm going to almost connect my eyebrows. But that to me is a little, that's extreme. You have like three different eyeshadow colors, but your touch, your eyebrows are connecting. Like you went extreme up here, but not on the eyeshadow. Like that's all around the eyes. Like that's the, like the focal point for most people. You can get a lot of, um, you can communicate a lot with your eyes. So all I'm doing is just put it, saturating it more color so it doesn't, I mean, it's not spotty. They've always, um, AB, any type of ABH product that I've gotten, um, except for the color or subculture palette, but we won't go there. Um, we went there before. Uh, I've, I'll, I've loved all their products for the most part. And uh, also, I have this scar on the side note as well. I have this scar, and it's funny how I got this. Okay. So, when I was younger, I used to do some um, not-so-intelligent things. I would always, like... Okay, so getting me new shoes when I was a kid was, was the worst idea ever. And the only reason I say that is because if I saw a tree, then I was running up it, climbing up it. If I saw a rock, I was jumping on it. You know, I was always doing something, like, jumping around. I was never sitting still, like... I'd run through mud, like, I can't even keep shoes clean now. So, just putting that out there. Anyway, um, the, so, what was I talking about when I was talking about that? Shoes. I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, so what I was doing was, one day, I went to a playground with one of my friends. And I ran up a slide because I was going to run, jump over where you like, you know, you grab on and you swing down 
and like use you you kind of push yourself use the momentum of the handle above you to go down the slide yeah i tried to jump over that bar where you push yourself off and my foot got hit my foot got caught in the bar and then i bounced my face off off the the metal stairs like three stairs and then i hit the ground and i'm like i could feel it in my face i'm like i know i hurt myself really bad but i'm like and i was telling my friend i'm like Is it, do i look bad and he's like no you look good and he's like wait a minute you're bleeding from your from your forehead and i was like oh okay that's it no other spot no you're bleeding from your eye or under your eye or over your eye and then you're bleeding over here and i'm like oh my goodness my whole side of my face like where my eye is it was all swollen but i have this scar right here i don't even know if you can see it but um yeah the apple it kind of is uh, makes it a little harder to apply makeup because of that scar but i make it work anyway all that long story to talk about to describe this scar. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm gonna lighten the this color up a little bit, but I don't have anything in that palette to do so. Um, so let me. I'll be right back. Let me go get another another um, palette, and then when I come back, we'll talk about weird customs of ancient Rome. Okay. All right. Be right back. So I'm going to use the Morphe Ice Ice Fantasy Palette because there's a lot of blues in there that I can use to kind of blend that out. I'm actually going to see, I will use, I'm going to try this one. They don't have shade names, so I mean, get it together, Morphe. They don't even have a mirror, like for real. Can you put this out? I digress. Okay, so this no-named color that I'm using, and I'm just going to blend it out. Blend it out, blend it out, blend it out. All righty. Do you see how it blend that out? Nice. Okay. Okay, so here's some weird facts, okay? So, um, in public restrooms, Romans used sponges on a stick, called it a tertorium, and it was at, like, they used it as communal toilet paper. Communal toilet paper. Communal toilet paper. That's disgusting. <laughs> Imagine what that smelled like, or look, ugh, no thank you. Um, prostitution was common, and all of them dyed their hair blonde to stand out, so you knew they were a prostitute. That's interesting as well. Um, I'm really liking this blending color. I feel like it's blending nice. It's not too much. Okay. So there's that, there's that. All right. So now I got to put the... Okay. So now, um, oh... Um, Romans actually use gladiators' blood too for to cure epilep epilepsy, 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 and infertility, which is pretty weird. Um, the color purple was only for emperors and high-ranking Romans. Emperors consumed a little bit of every poison to build up immunity. Um, used human and animal urine as mouthwash. Gross me out the door. Believe that phallic symbols brought good luck as well as ward off evil charms. Amulets, sculptures, sculptures were worn by soldiers. They were also displayed on children and commoners as well as out in the open on shops and in temples. So there was just dicks everywhere. I mean, it sounds it doesn't sound horrible. It's, yeah. Um. What else? Oh, let's talk about the marketplace again. Oh, full back. We'll come back full circle. 
So, um, let me just make sure I got this. This, there's the, okay. So now I gotta do the eyeliner. That's next. Let me just find it quick. Okay, here it is. Oh, and I gotta do under the eye too. Wait, just a minute. Okay. All right, so let me do the eyeliner. Okay, so again, um, does anybody remember what marketplaces were called in ancient Rome? If you said forum, you are correct. Um, the biggest market was the Trajan market. It was in Rome, Italy, at the opposite end of the Colosseum. I'm imagining they sold a lot of gladiator sweat and blood and animal fat and, you know, all that good stuff, you know, because that's hot commodity back then. Um, it was the Via Diafora Imperiale. I'm horrible with that. Um, referred to by an ancient writer as a, a construction unique under the heavens. That's pretty cool. Seems like the place to be. They sold things from sor from sources such as plantations like grapes, which they made wine. Um, olive oil, obviously from olives. As well as meats and vegetables. Roman artisans also sell sold goods too. So I'm just doing the eyeliner. Putting the coal in, so coal in, not the coal in, putting the coal in my waterline. Okay, we got the one side. One size, Patrick Star. But anyway, yeah, so um, let's talk about more about this. Uh, tailors sold clothing, jewels, crafted soul, crafters sold gems, masons sold stone blocks, and blacksmiths sold iron tools. The currency was government produced in ancient Rome. Um, currency was made of silver, gold, and sometimes even bronze. I just drew all over myself. I'm always so crazy with stuff. I'm like, oh, oh, uh, and then they used, uh, so the three most traded goods was wine, olive oil, and garum. I had to actually look up garum because I had no idea what it was, but it's fermented fish sauce. And I guess it was like as popular as ketchup is today, but it's fermented fish sauce. So yummy, but I guess it was. That was a hot commodity back then. All the kids loved it. But I don't think it'd be as popular today. Let's just say that. Um, yeah, I gotta put more eyeliner in. This is not a good eyeliner pencil. That's why I'm having a little bit of a difficulty with it. Because it's just... Some of them don't want to work. Some brands are just... They don't have the formula right. I'm not saying the formula is horrible on this, but I'm not saying it's great either. Okay. So we got that. We got that. I can take this off. Take this off. Come on. Take. Okay. So then we got my eyes done. Okay. So, um, these places were met as central meeting points within cities in ancient Rome. They also provided other services such as bars, restaurants, and even brothels. Um, they're what is considered like the center of cities today. So it was like downtown, um, which I thought was pretty interesting. So, I mean, basically, so they what they did is they just, I mean, I fill in my eyebrows already, but 
they just fill him in hardcore and then they just want to put him into the center and I'm just not living that fantasy so I don't think I'm going to do all that but they did like long eyelashes I mean mine are horrible and then that's it yeah Okay, so um, I think that's it. So I think I'm pretty much done with the makeup. Again, like I said, they didn't have um, much when it came to. I know they said that they, they had eye, the eyebrow makeup. Um, they did the. Um, ah, we'll put a little bit of blush on. I don't think they had it. Well, I don't really know if they had it, but <sighs> there you are. You're right here. There we go. That looks better. Blush, blush, blush. Okay, so we got that, we got that. All right, so I think my makeup came out pretty good today. It's just the, the green eyeshadow that they really had. They had the pale white skin. If you were wealthy, um, they used the coal and the, for the eyeliner. And yeah, they used Pia's mouthwash. So I feel like certain characteristics or certain part of parts of Rome, like the baths and the the spa type things they were spot on with that but i feel like with certain other things they weren't i mean oh and another thing um i guess in ancient rome it was okay to be gay like as long as it was male on male but never female on female that wasn't okay and i guess the males and females used to have sex with their gladiators um yeah, that was seen as normal, especially the males. So, like, gay gay relationships weren't an issue back then. But if you were two women, that was an issue. So, I thought that was pretty uh, interesting as well. But, yeah. So, I hope you, everyone enjoyed my video today. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. And, again, if you have anything you want me to research and to talk about... Please feel free to let me know. I'm thinking about maybe talking about another topic when it comes to history. So something else history. If anybody has any ideas or anybody wants to, you know, learn more about something, I can do the research and yeah. But anyway, I hope everyone has a great day and I will talk to you in the next video. All right. Bye. Hey, just want to jump back on here quick to let you guys know. Um, yes, they did apply blush. I actually said in the starting of my video. So by using the blush, it actually worked out. So they did use blush and they did use eyeshadow. So um, the only things I didn't do was put powder all over my face. You know, that whole white look. But that was for wealthy people. Um, also, I didn't, you know... Fill in heavily fill in my eyebrows with soot and connect them because girl no matter what era that shit ain't cute so but i told you guys about it so that should count for something but anyway um thank you again for coming and watching me on my channel and i hope you have a great day bye